Hi guys, welcome to today's tutorial on um, the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple with factor trees. Um, obviously, this is a, a tutorial looking at the HCF and the LCM. So, before we get to the factor tree part of it, let's just look at what a highest common factor and a lowest common multiple is. Okay, we all know, know what factors are. They're numbers that divide evenly into another number. So, we're going to look at the number 12 and the number, uh, let's say, 8. So let's have a look at the factors of 12 to start off with. So we've got the factors of 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. The factors of 8 we know to be 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. So when we talk about the HCF or the highest common factor, we're looking at trying to find the highest common factor. So the factor that occurs in both of these, but the highest one. Now we'll notice that we've got that 1 is in both, we'll notice that 2 is in both, we'll notice that 4 is in both. So they're all common factors, so if we're looking for the, the highest common factor, okay, the highest common factor in this case would be 4, because 4 occurs in both of them, that's the highest number. Now, what about the lowest common multiple? Well, hopefully you remember that a multiple, or another word for a multiple, would be the times tables, okay, a times tables. So, for example, if we're looking at the multiples of 12, we'll be looking at the, of the 12 times tables. So 12, 24, 36, etc., 48. I just usually write out three or four of them. And then if I look at the of 8, so we're looking at 8, 16, 24. I could go on, but I'm going to stop because we're looking for the lowest common multiple. So the minute I can find a multiple that's exactly the same, in this case we've got 24, we've got 24, that becomes the lowest common multiple of 24. Now these are two very or smaller numbers, so it's not too difficult to find the, the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of those two numbers. But when we get to numbers like, you know, let's say 120 or 240, there are going to be a lot of different factors, and so it's going to be difficult to find the highest common factor and likewise it'll be difficult to find the lowest common multiple. So we're going to look at those two concepts but we're going to use factor trees to, to assist us. Now although 12 and 8 we've just seen are fairly easy to do, we're going to look at the same two numbers 12 and 8 to start off with and then we'll look at uh, two more, more challenge numbers. So let's do some factor trees. So 12 we can have 3 and 4, 3 is a prime number, 4 breaks down to 2 and 2. And underneath I'm going to write 2 times 2 times 3. Likewise for 8 we've got 4 and 2 where 2 is prime. We've got 2 and 2 and they're both prime. So I'm going to write 2 times 2 times 2. Now I could write 2 squared times 4 and 2 cubed but when I'm looking for a highest common factor it's, um, I'm looking at the more expanded form. Okay, so what I'm going to look for, for when I'm looking for the highest common factor, we're looking for all those numbers that are common. Okay, so what numbers in the left hand side occur on the right hand side? So let's have a look. We've got a 2 and a 2. So they're both common, so I'm going to write that up there. We've got another 2 and another 2. Okay, so they're both common. So I'm going to put it times 2. So that 2 times 2 occurs in both sides. Now, we have a 3 and a 2 left over. They're not the same. So I stop there. And we're actually going to write out that our highest common factor is equaling to 4. And if you reflect back to what we just looked at in the previous example, we saw that was the case. So you can see, once we've got our factor trees, it's very simple just to see what is, occurs on both of the trees, and then we just find that answer out. Now, if we look at the lowest common multiple now, the lowest common multiple. Now, an easy way of looking at the com at lowest common multiple is by looking at your highest common factor, whatever your highest common factor is. So in this case, we've got 4, because it's 2 times 2 goes into both of them. So it's whatever the, lowest common, the highest common factor is, so the the 2 times 2, and I'll write that down. And then we look at whatever is left over, and we tack that onto the end. So we've got a times 3 that's left over, and we've got a times 2 that is left over. Okay, so now I can do that. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. And that, again, looking at that last dance, that last one, 
four and 24 were both our answers. So you can see that we can do that the same way. Now obviously if you've got two smaller numbers, you might find it easier to do that first method without doing the factor trees. However, when you get to some la um, larger numbers, like we're gonna look at in a moment, you can see the benefit of that. So we're gonna look at another example. You might wanna have a go at this and, and, and pause it and see how you go. Okay, and then you can uh, play it. But we're gonna look at the two numbers, 120 and 100. So we're gonna look at the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. So, I mean, if I had to write this out a long way, you know, I've got one and 100, two and 50, you know, four and 25, I've got lots of different numbers. So let's look at the factor tree. So I'm gonna use 10 and 10. Then I'm gonna use five and two. I'm going to do the same thing, 5 and 2. So very quickly, look at that. I've got my prime factors written out. You can see that was very quick. Likewise here, we've already done this before, I think. So we're going to do 30 and 4. We're going to do 5 and 6. 5 is prime. 3 and 2. Both of those are prime. And for the 4, we've got 2 and 2. And both of those are prime. And we're going to write those out. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times five and you'll start seeing now for this particular example the benefits of oops um, writing those out from smallest to biggest so if I look to find the highest common factor for these two numbers now it's a simple matter of seeing what is on both sides so here I've got a two a two and a five a two a two and a five okay so we've got a two a two and a five Notice that we've got a 5 in the left hand, a 2 and a 3 in the right hand side, they're not common. So that's it. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 5 is 20. Look at that, straight away I've got my highest common factor. If I do the same thing for my lowest common multiple, we recall in that last example, it's whatever we had for the highest common factor. So 2 times 2 times 5, okay, because that's what I've already got there. But then we add on for the lowest common multiple whatever is left over. So we've got a times five. I'll run out of room there, so I'm going to do underneath. We've got a times two and a times three. Okay, now we can do that. Two times two is four. Four times five is 20. 20 times five is 100. 100 times two is 200. And 200 times three is 600 very quick way now that we've used to find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of both of those numbers. Okay, we're going to go through just one last example just to make sure that we've got this. Okay, so again you might want to pause this, apologies for that, you might want to pause this and, and just see, have a go at yourself. So we're going to use the numbers 150 and we're going to use the numbers let's say 300. Okay, so I'm going to use 15 and 10, and I'm going to use 5 and 3, they're both prime, 5 and 2, they're both prime. So 2 times 3 times 5 times 5, then for 300 I'm going to use 30 and 10, then I'm going to use 5 and 6, 5 is prime, 3 and 2, they're both prime, and then I'm going to use 5 and 2. You can see how important when I circle it, it's so much easier to see that. So I'm going to write this underneath. 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5. And so now it's a simple matter of just finding my highest common factor. So what is common in both of them? Well, we've got a 2, a 3. We've got a 2 and a 3. And look, we've actually got both of the 5s there are also common. Okay, so we've got 2 times 3 times 5 times 5 and I would, we don't even have to do that calculation because look we know all of that is automatically 150 so my highest common factor actually is 150 look at that and now my lowest common multiple hopefully we remember to find the lowest common multiple it's just that 150 because whatever we already have for our highest common factor and now whatever's left over and you can see there's nothing left over there we've just simply got that times by 2 and that gives us 300 is our lowest common multiple. And that sounds right because, you know, you think about this, 
the multiples of 150 would be 150, 300, 450, but yeah, it's already there. Okay, so look, I hope you found this um, useful. If you're still a bit unsure, make sure you please ask me, write some questions if you would like to on Edmodo, um, but please make sure if you don't understand the things that I've gone through um, for this particular lesson, make sure you ask me in class. Thanks guys, have a great afternoon.